The whole point of an urban legend is to convince people that it might be true. How else would they spread? Most legends remain unauthenticated, yet still smack of historical accuracy. Although, some are definitely verifiable while still maintaining that legendary status. The age of the internet helps a lot with this, thanks to instantaneously available sources, but it's also true that the internet spreads misinformation as well. Be careful with what you're reading, and maybe look a little deeper, especially if any of these signed and sealed myths seem too good to be true. I swear they are, though. Hello, horror heads, and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be taking a look at the top five internet urban legends that came true. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more honorable hijinks. Wicked, let's begin. Coming in at number five, we've got the body under the bed. I don't know if this counts as an urban legend or a universal experience. Everyone has, no exceptions, checked under their bed for monsters or something of the like. There are countless stories of robbers, murderers, doppelgangers, and assorted fireflies hanging out beneath people's mattresses. But nobody ever expects it to come true. At least, not after graduating grade school. But this is exactly what happened to a hapless couple trying to relax at a hotel after a long day. Thankfully, there wasn't a living creature lying in wait beneath the bed frame, but the body below wasn't much better. The couple shuffled into the room and immediately noticed that something was off. It smelled real bad. Corpse-like, even. If you checked into a hotel room and the first thing you noticed was the distinct odor of rotting flesh, you'd be upset. So the couple called down to the front desk and complained about the stench. After moving the duo to a less rotten room, the smell was investigated, leading to the discovery of a dead body beneath the bed. The state of the body also implied that it had been lying there for weeks as different guests stayed in the room. I'm sure they were pleased as punch when they discovered that their hotel stay involved an undiscovered cadaver underneath their sleeping heads. What do you even do as a hotel staff at that point? Do you own up to the corpse being under the bed, or do you just hope the story fizzles out? Either way, the classic myth of the below the bed body has been proven true, at least in this case. Is it worth checking below the hotel bed now? Coming in at number four, we've got rats in the toilet bowl. I'll preface this entry with an unfortunate truth. Crocodiles can't actually survive in the New York sewer system. I know it's hard to take, but it's true. Even if folks kept them as pets and then flushed them when they were babies, they wouldn't survive long during New York winters, and we wouldn't see them crawling up through the pipes anytime soon. Plus, living in filth is bad for most creatures. Creatures that aren't rats, I guess. Here is another unfortunate truth. Rats have been found in people's toilets after crawling around in the plumbing. And they're not going to be too friendly after making that trip either. See, drain plumbing is the perfect size for a mangy rodent to wriggle through, especially if they're scavenging undigested food matter left behind after your last trip to the porcelain throne. Rats are often attracted to sewage lines thanks to these particular waste particles, and will sometimes travel along to the very end of the line, the very end of the line being your toilet bowl. They're very good swimmers, you know. It's okay to have a complete and total mental breakdown if this happens to you. Nobody expects you to keep it together if a sewage-covered rodent places itself inches from your private vents. They're not quite as suave as Roddy the Rat from Flushed, unfortunately. There's one tale where a woman in Virginia got bit on the butt by one of these spelunking scrabblers. So yeah, check your toilet bowl before you hunker down, unless you're cool with some tiny teeth on your taint. And if you do end up seeing one, treat it like any other filthy floater and flush it. Coming in at number three, we've got reappearing cities. To be fair, this is more of a legend legend than an urban one, but it's fascinating just the same. Legendary lost cities are a staple in the imaginations of explorers. El Dorado, Aztlan, Atlantis, wouldn't it be incredible to find them? Imagine the discoveries that might be made, the lost history recovered. Although many have sought these locations out, few have succeeded, which is why it's so exciting when one does reappear. Way back in the 18th century, a British tourist wrote down the story of a group of temples hidden under the sea in southern India. It seemed that a wicked flood subsumed six, leaving the seventh still standing on the shore. For centuries, this legend stood as people told the tale of the curtailed temples. Then, following a destructive tsunami in 2004, the temples were revealed to the world once more. The coastline receded far enough that people could finally get a closer look at them, drowned so many years ago. The tsunami itself was devastating, so I'm not sure if it was the best trade. And let's be real, hidden temples often contain curses waiting to be unleashed upon the world. Something tells me that these making a triumphant return might bring some additional dread to the surface. Nobody go looking for hidden treasure now, you hear? Coming in at number two, we've got the main hermit. All the scariest stories come from New England, just as Stephen King and H.P. Lovecraft. With all of the iconic additions to the horror canon these two provided alone, there are enough urban legends to fuel Boston's surroundings for generations. But if you look a little closer at the yarns these legends are spinning, you'll realize that a lot of them just simply can't be true. At least not in the way that we could ever understand. 
There are no deadlights, no Pennywise the Clown, no demonic cornfields or Wendigo infested graveyards, no mysterious Fishman hybrids, no Miskatonic University, no Arkham. If you have proof to the contrary, please let me know. I would love to be proven wrong on this. But for now, we'll have to look to an actual local legend that was inevitably proven true. If you were the outdoorsy type, you might have made it out to Central Maine's North Pond area. You might have noticed that some of your stuff was disappearing without explanation. This kind of behavior went on for decades, with vacationers, cottagers, and campers all experiencing some sort of disappearing supplies. This led to folks believing that a single entity was sticking around and stealing their stuff. And guess what? They were eventually proven right. It was discovered that a man by the name of Christopher Knight had been living alone in the woods for upwards of 25 years. That's a long time to be living alone unbothered, but good old Chris Knight knew exactly what he was doing. Living off the land, largely, but also committing small-scale steals whenever he needed something a little extra. And he's probably living the life, too. In the end, he was a pretty reasonable guy. Most folks would assume that hermits are volatile and dangerous, but Chris seemed to have a good head on his shoulders. When confronted by a warden, he admitted that he was behind something like 40 robberies a year. An honest hermit, who knew? And finally at number one, we've got corpse decorations. It's a classic campfire tale that has evolved at the times. A secret serial killer uses the bodies of his victims to decorate an abode, or a twisted mortician convinces kids to gallivant beneath pieces of people on Halloween. It's been done in movies, on TV, and in video games galore, but there's no way this actually happens, right? Well, actually, it did once. It wasn't as malicious as many of the tales make it seem, though. There wasn't some crazed lunatic hanging a real body from the eaves just to get away with it, no. Instead, it was an accidental accentuation. Way back in the early 20th century, there was a criminal by the name of Elmer McCurdy. After dying, McCurdy was embalmed and carted around as a sideshow attraction all across Texas. People came from far and wide to see the preserved body of a notorious criminal. Funeral parlors, carnivals, and all sorts of cavalcades of perversion showed off the body. It was so well-traveled that for a while, people totally lost track of it. Eventually, over 50 years later, the body made its return as a funhouse prop. Somehow, an employee of the New Pike Amusement Park saw this preserved corpse and said, yep, that's a fake body, all right. So Elmer went up and stayed up for quite a while. In fact, the only reason he was discovered to be real was that a crew member from a movie being shot on location tried to adjust the body for a shot. In doing so, Elmer's arm came right off. The man was just doing his job and ended up tearing a dead man's limb from its body. Oh my. So while it's unlikely that creepy Mr. Jenkins down the street is hanging real corpses from his oak tree, you better double check your props before putting them up. My oh my, the things we take at face value can be astonishing. Most legends are staunchly in the unprovable category, but when they do have some truth, it can be a little jarring, eh? So what did you think of this list? Are there any urban legends you've seen come to life? Which urban legend would you want to be true? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more frisky ones from the top five scary aquatic monsters you won't believe. DC Carter says, Gilman is great, but don't let your cat get near him. Eck. Yeah, I heard he's got quite the penchant for felines. CTC TV says, I think the Loch Ness Monster would be a good entry. Just that don't know that it really looks like is even more scary. But Nessie's so famous for being friendly. How could I include a pal like that on a scary list? Hylian Batman says, you're not supposed to talk about it. Actually, no, sorry. You're not supposed to talk about it. Well, how was I supposed to know? It was before I went to my first time. Lord Inquisitor Ignis says, so I'm never going near a body of water again. Hell, I'll avoid puddles just to be safe. Now just replace all the water in your diet with some form of liquor and you'll be golden. And Joseph Rossi says, I like your posters. What's on the one behind you? We've got green room. We've got Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and this one is the thing. It's got a little glare on it, my bad. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I shotgun a can of hand sanitizer, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more opalescent opining. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Most legends remain on the lip. However, there are definitely very... What? At least, not after graduating. Great lip. El Dorado, Aztlan, Aztlan, dang it. But let's be real. Nope, nope, uh. Discovered <laughs> uh. to be real was the fact that a crew member from a movie. No, 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 no. So while it's unlikely. So while it's unlikely that Chris. If you have proof to the contrary, please let me know. I would love to be proved wrong on this. Is it proved or proven? Is, is proved or proven grammatically correct? If you have proof to the contrary, please let me know. I would love to be proven wrong on this. Proven or proved?